Now we are going to start with a new chapter called as continuity and differentiability. In this video, we are going to see a quick recap and review of what was limits, what we studied in class 11th. Now we know that continuity and differentiability is altogether a very different and new chapter for us, but we have already studied limits and study of limits is very much essential to study continuity and study of continuity in turn is very much essential to study differentiability. So these all come under the category of calculus as we all know and it is very important that you please revise all the concepts of limits of your previous class before watching this video. I will be taking a quick recap of limits. Now whenever we used to see limit fx wherein x tends to a is equal to l, what did we mean by that? Lim when you see means limits that we are talking about limit. Now x arrow a, this arrow is read as what? This arrow is read as tends to, remember? And a is given to me. fx is what? fx is the function that we are taking into consideration and l is the value of that function. It means what? x tends to a means what? x tends to a always means that my x is neither equal to a that means it is not equal to a but it is very 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 near to a not equal to a and what else does it mean it also means another important thing and that thing is that my the function the function value that given to me is equal to l it is not actually equal to it fx is expected to be fx is expected to be equal to L but it is actually not equal to L that we need to know and that we already know from our 11th class. That means what we are basically talking about A wherein we are talking about the neighborhood of A that means I have A somewhere here. Now I can reach A from the left hand side from this side as well as from the right hand side. Talking about the left hand side and talking about limit there, we say it is LHL which is said as left hand limit and talking about the right hand side, we say that it is RHL. All these things have already been studied and we also saw that limit always exists in case that left hand limit is equal to right hand limit and that should be a finite number or quantity, right? Suppose we have this example. Now this example talks about fx. fx is what? It is equal to x square minus 9 upon x minus 3. Now what is the value of function when my x is equal to 3? Suppose I talk about x being equal to 3. What happens? fx is equal to 3 square minus 9. My solution changes to 3 square minus 9 which is 9 minus 9 which is 0 upon 3 minus 3 which is 0. That means I have got an indeterminate form. This form does not exist in reality for us, for our study of mathematics. So this should not be the case. Since this should not be the case, what we do is we apply the concept of limits in these questions. We have already done these type of questions a lot in our junior class of class 11. What we do is we basically take fx and here we take limit x tends to 3. You have always seen that for limit either you can use LIM or you can use LT. What happens then? It is limit x tends to 3 and the question is x square minus 9 upon x minus 3. For solution of this question what you do is you basically factorize the numerator. It becomes limit x tends to 3. x square minus 9 can be split in the form of x plus x plus 3 and x minus 3. Why? Because it is basically the formula of a square minus b square which is a plus b into a minus b. So it is x plus 3, x minus 3 upon x minus 3, upon x minus 3. Some things get cancelled and ultimately what we get is we basically get limit x tends to 3, x plus 3 with the value of 3 you get 6. Now some students think that okay if you get 6 it's very good, it's fine. But exactly what I mean to say and actually what I mean to say is that fx is expected, fx is supposed and thought to be and assumed to be reaching 6 when 
x is expected to approach 3 so it is that is why it's known as the concept of limit that the limiting value or the neighborhood actually is into consideration if you have somewhere 3 here and you see that you can approach 3 from left hand side and right hand side this becomes your right hand limit this becomes your left hand limit and just near to that just near to 3 suppose I see a point that may be 3.00001 and just near on the left hand side it may be 2.9999 and so on so that means when these values are also there the function value is expected to reach 6 and not exactly equal to 6 so with this introduction and with all the previous concepts on limits of class 11th which you will watch and study yourself we will start in the next video with the actual topic that is continuity